The Key from Spain, Flori Jacota and Her Music by Debbie Levy, illustrated by Sonia Wimmer. Long ago, in a place called Al Andalus in the land of Spain, there was a time of dazzling music and science, art and poetry, map making and mathematics, and harmony among neighbors, Muslims, Jews, and Christians. Many years passed. New rulers conquered the land. The new king and queen said to the Jews, you are not welcome here, leave. The Jewish families left Spain. The Altaras family was one of them. The Altaras journeyed first to Turkey, later to Bosnia, always carrying two precious possessions with them. One was a very little, a key. The other was very big, yet took up no space at all, Ladino. Ladino, the language of the Shepherdim, the Jews from Spain. Ladino, a language made from many, many languages, from Spanish and Hebrew and Arabic. Ladino, the language the Shepherdim spoke at home. In the tiny mountain village of Valencia, the Alturaras li again lived in harmony, harmony among their neighbors. They became a large family with Nona and Nanu and Tias and uncles and cousins, more than 40 members strong, including a girl named Flori. She grew up with Jewish, Muslim, and Christian friends, with neighbors of different faiths living and working side by side like her ancestors before her. Flori and her family spoke Ladino at home, Bosnian in the village. They sang and sang and sang and sang in both languages. No village celebration was complete without the singing on Terra's family making music into the wee hours. Shepardic and Bosnian melodies, voices trilling, hands clapping, guitars, mandolins, tamboritzas and tambourines pulsing with the rhythms. Songs filled the sky, music filled Flori's heart. Nona filled Flori's heart too, not only with her songs and guitar playing and kitchen drawer overflowing with pages of music, but also with traditions, kissing the mezuzah, lighting candles in times of trouble and times of prayer, sewing linens for brides to be. And every Friday before Sabbath, Nona gave Flori and her cousins baskets filled with food to take to neighbors in need. Tisaka, don't wait for them to say thank you, Nona said. We are fortunate that we can give to them. In Nona's house, the little key, Liab de España, watched over the family. Nona told Flori its story. Many centuries ago, our ancestors had no choice but to leave the country they loved. They could not take much with them, but they did take the key to their home. That key on the wall opens the door to a beautiful house in Spain. One day, an Alteras will return to Spain, find the house, open the door, and be home once again. Flori loved the story, but she didn't want to be the Alteras who returned to Spain because she never wanted to leave Valencia. But her parents wanted to leave. They liked the big city. Goodbye, village. Zagreb in Croatia had a brand new beautiful school. Music lessons, art, ballet, gymnastics, theater. But it did not have Nona, Nanu, Tias, uncles, cousins, friends, Shabbat Vasquez. It did not have the songs. Flori missed Valencia. Her father saw her sorrow. He bought her a harmonicu. Flori played the songs of her Nona and they helped her feel closer to home. A terrible war came, the Second World War. Life became dangerous, especially for Jews. Flori's parents wanted her to be safe and to be safe, she needed to leave Zagreb. They got her a train ticket to another city called Split. They would follow, they promised, on another train another day. It was too risky for three Jews to travel together. Florica, her father said, from the minute you sit in that train compartment, don't speak. He feared Flori might say something in Ladino, revealing that she was Jewish. Just play your harmoniku. Flori took off the badge that all Jews had to wear and walked to the station, pretending to be an ordinary girl a non-Jewish girl going on a trip. She played and played every song she knew, Bosnian, Croatian, but not a word in Ladino. 
The compartment filled with people all joining together to sing, all believing Flory was one of them. Such a jolly journey for everyone else. Flory hugged her harmonica close and it saved her. Flory reached the seaside city of Spleets and her parents soon joined her. They lived as refugees without a home, not knowing what would happen to them, not knowing what happened to those left behind in Valencia. And when the fighting finally ended, Flory and her parents learned that the war had taken nearly everyone they loved. Like her ancestors who fled Spain, Flory sailed away. Unlike her ancestors, Flory carried no little key. Not from Spain, not from Valencia. Those keys were lost in the war. But Flory carried three other precious possessions. One, her harmonicu, two, ladino, and three, bigger than everything, yet taking up no space at all, music. She was Flory Jagoda now, an American with an American husband and wife and family. Her American family could never meet her Nona or hear the singing Alteras family, but Flory could share their music. She did have a key after all, and with this key of music, she unlocked the door to that past life and those beloved people across the ocean and across the years. Flory brought her music to people everywhere, around the country and the world, on stages, in schools, in homes, playing guitar as her Nona played guitar. She could take audiences through the streets of her village, show them the roses in the windows, seat them at her tia's Passover tables, and even imagine a house in Spain, waiting, forever waiting, for an Alteris to return. More about Flory Jagoda and her music. Flory was born in Bosnia on December 21st, 1923. For much of her childhood, she lived in her grandparents' house in Valencia. By the time World War II ended, Flory was a young woman. She went to work in Italy, where she and an American soldier, Harry Jagoda, fell in love and married. Before moving to the United States, Flory received the horrifying news that 42 members of the Alteritz family in her village had been killed in the Holocaust. In the U.S., Flory dedicated herself to raising her four children and to performing, teaching, and writing Shepardic songs in Ladino. She became known worldwide as the Keeper of the Flame of Shepardic music. In 2002, Flory was honored as a National Endowment for the Arts Heritage Fellow an award recognizing the most significant folk artist in the United States. Ladino, also called Judeo-Spanish, has existed for centuries. Today, few people know or speak the language, but if you have ever celebrated Hanukkah, chances are good that you have heard Ladino and already know Flory's music. Her famous song, Ocho Quinlacas, Eight Little Candles, is sung in Ladino at Hanukkah celebrations around the world. A last note about the very first sentence in this book. Long ago, in a place called Al Andalus, in the land of Spain, there was harmony among neighbors, Muslims, Jews, and Christians. Under this period of Muslim rule in Spain, from 711 to 1492, Jews did not have full citizenship rights. But despite these restrictions, the Alteras family carried with them memories of a good life before the Christian conquest of Spain in 1492.